Hello everyone, I'm Pierre bringing you another RenPy tutorial. In this one we're going to continue talking about screens. Uh, we last finished a grid screen right here. Next we're going to make a combination screen of HBoxes and VBoxes. So let's call it screen combo screen. And this one won't take any arguments. Let's say style, oops, hbox, then style, centered style, then we'll have a vbox inside the hbox. You can put pretty much any component inside of any other container component. So then inside the vbox, let's have Y align 0 0.5, text 1, text 2, text 3, size 50, size 50, size 50. And then after that, we're going to have a whole nother V box that's going to have Text four, size fifty. Text five, size fifty. Text six, size fifty. And text seven, size fifty. The reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to show off how you can do alignment even inside of other containers. Obviously, there's going to be four lines here and three lines here. So what does that mean? That means that normally we'd have the one, two, three at the top and the four, five, six at the top, and then the seven would hang down below. But because we're doing Y line 0 0.5 here, it's going to center it vertically uh, against the whole container, which is going to be defined by its largest component or tallest component in this case, which is the second V box. So let's add that to our script. Let's make a new one. Hide screen grid screen. Show screen combo screen. And let's just put a the end there. So let's run it. And there's our beginning stuff. And here's this right here. So as you can see, the one is not up there at the top. It's centered and staggered in between them. So that's how you can align things within co different containers. OK, now what about this thing right here with the fact that I have size 50 each time. Well, I'm going to talk about style prefixes now. So I'm going to make two more styles. I'm going to say style combo text size 50 and style combo hbox and I'll say is centered style, which is basically saying, well, copy this here. So it's the same, it's got the same thing as these, I just don't have to type it again. Then here, I can say instead of centered style for the H box, I can say for the whole combo screen, style prefix combo. Because if you notice, both of my new styles have the prefix combo here. One will refer to text and one will refer to the H box. So what happens with style prefixes is that it applies to all children of whatever uh, container it's in. So this H box, because it's an H box, it suffixes H box, it's going to get combo H box as its style right there. 
and the all these texts, they're gonna get combo text as their style. So I can delete all these size 50s and it'll still be how it should be. So let's see that in action. It should look exactly the same as last time. And it does. Okay, so that's one way I could have saved myself a lot of typing in the first place if I had just done that, the style prefix combo. Obviously, the more different things you have inside a, a container, the more useful a style prefix can be for you. Now, if you specify a style in here, like in this VBox, if I say style, whatever, I mean, it doesn't exist, but let's say, I'll just say style, whatever equal, is Y align equals 0 0.5. Style, whatever, Y line 0 0.5. Then let's see what happens here. Looks like it's still got the same size, but if I was going to change the style prefix, then that would change it all the way down. So it's basically like whatever's most recently added or applied is what overrides anything else. That's what you need to remember when it comes to styles. Okay, let's get rid of that. Next up, I'm gonna talk about image buttons and using actual actions for them. So let us define a global variable called total. And this is going to represent the total number of times I've pressed my image button. And it's going to start at zero. Then I'm going to make a Python block. And I'm just going to define a little function, inc total. And then I'm going to say global total, which means that I'm, nope, just total. And using the word global there means I'm importing basically my global into my function so that I can change it. Um, otherwise, any changes I would make to total would not last outside the function call. So total plus equals one. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, inside the H box, I'm gonna make an, a text that says, oh, total, and then total. So this is interpolation. I'm put, taking the value of total and I'm putting it in there. And then after that, we are going to have an image button. If we look at the documentation for image buttons, this auto thing here can be a little bit confusing, but basically what you do with it is if you say auto, you can use this percent %s thing to specify different buttons to make basically a one-liner when you make your image button code so that you don't have to say image button button idle equals this image button button hover or or hovered when it uses this selected idle equals this selected hover equals this and all that jazz so what i'm gonna do is I'm going to say image button auto and I have in here 
some buttons here, say button hover, button idle, button selected hover, and button selected idle. So I'll say button percent s dot png because they're all pngs. And let's say action is going to be function and ink total. So what this is doing right now is actions have a certain consequence to when you actually run them. And it's run it calling some function or whatever. There are a bunch of built-in ones like changing preferences, navigating to a different menu, jumping, all that kind of stuff. But you can also call your own custom functions. And to do that, you do function and then you do the name of the function itself. Plus, if it takes any arguments, you would also pass them in here as extra arguments. Okay? So let's see what happens. Da, da, da. Oops, ink total is not defined. I wonder if I put an init python. Yeah, there we go. You have to put in an init python instead of just a python block. So my total, notice the hovering is happening automatically. It's changing from one image to the other. And every time I click, the total goes up. So great. What about selected? How do I make it my button selected? So what we're going to do for that is we're going to add a second function or a second action here to this function. So I'm going to make instead of just the function itself, I'm going to make an array of actions and we're going to use the selected if function. And selected if just takes a Boolean expression. So in this case, I'm going to say um, if total modulus 2 equals 1. So that's if total is an odd number. And then I'm going to run it. And we see that I have four different buttons that I defined in one line. So really, once again, it's just shorthand and you have to save your images with the correct names, but it, it saves you a lot of time and it makes your code look cleaner. So that's what um, image buttons are all about. Um, that's all I have for the screen customization tutorial. I'd love to hear what you guys think of it or if you think I'm missing anything. Uh, and next up is going to be customizing the GUI, I think.